Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. All right, everyone, we have the table out today. I have all my supplies, I have some plants. We are taking some propagations today and I am very excited about that. I had some friends over <laughs> and <laughs> I left the propagation box on the stairs. Honestly, I did it to myself. Everyone knocked into it, it fell down. This box really needs some attention. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then fill it with some new plants just so I have a few things growing for spring trading season. I like to get a little bit of a kickstart to it. But first, I wanna say a huge thank you to our sponsor, Skillshare. You know that we love Skillshare here on my channel, but in case you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes classes for creatives, creators, and many more. There's a boatload of classes from cooking to self-help to plant care. There is truly something for everyone on the platform. I just finished Live Encore, Grow Your Plant Family with Propagation, wink wink, by Christopher Griffin, who you probably know as Plant Queen on Instagram. This video was an encore to a video on Skillshare that I previously highlighted in a sponsored video. And honestly, my favorite part of that class was the Q&A section because a lot of people asked very frequently asked questions that I get hit with on my channel. I found it to be a very in-depth and insightful class on propagation with a lot of more nitty gritty questions answered. The first thousand subscribers to click the link in my description box down below will get a one month free trial to Skillshare so that you can access that class and so many more. Huge thank you to Skillshare once again. And now let's propagate some plants just how we learned from Plant Queen. Today I have, uh, I'll tell you what I have on the table just in case you wanna propagate with me. I have the plants that I will be propagating. I have a spray bottle filled with water. Uh, most of this stuff is actually linked in my Amazon shop that's linked in my description box. I have a pocket knife and some shears for different cutting purposes. And then of course I have my propagation box here. This is just a lock lid container with a layer of perlite down below. The first step that we're gonna do, I'm gonna move some of this stuff over even though it looks very pretty, is open this up and take all of the dead stuff out. <laughs> So I'm really just shifting, sifting through the perlite and I'm gonna grab anything that shouldn't be in here. I don't think it's too much. All right, I have this Skindapsis prop that really, whatever, maybe I'll hang on to it. We should be pretty good. I had some people ask me what the red solo cup was for and it's truly just here if I need to scoop out some perlite for whatever reason, so there's nothing mysterious about it. The first plant that we're gonna get through, probably fairly quickly, is this philodendron micans cutting that I took off of my big, big mama plant. And what you wanna do for these vining plants is find a node. This is what a node looks like. Usually there is a leaf popping out of there. It doesn't have to be necessarily, but it's this little bulging bit right here. What you wanna do for a successful propagation is leave about an inch on either side of the node, like so. And there you go, you have a little propagation. I'm gonna take this cutting and just ever so slightly bury the node under the perlite or whatever growing medium you wanna use. You can use water, you can use sphagnum peat moss, sphagnum moss, <laughs> whatever you wanna do. I find that these perlite boxes are very, very promising. Of course, when you are propagating, keep in mind that it's not gonna be a 100% success rate. You might have some failed propagations, so it's always best to take a few propagations of the same plant just to kind of increase your chances of having some happy plant new plants. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the rest of this vine and do the same thing, just kind of gently bury this node in the perlite. When it comes to the kind of top 
cutting here. You can see I have new growth. I'm going to leave an extra little leaf on the bottom. I'm not gonna go all the way to the top and propagate this any further because I do wanna leave some growth for the plant to be able to soak up light and nutrients and use that energy to continue to push out new growth because this cutting is not as established as one of these larger leaf cuttings like so. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can always comment them down below in the comment section. The philodendron micans is all done and happy in this prop box. The next one, and this is gonna be very easy, I took a bunch of cuttings from my String of Hearts plant, and honestly, I'm not gonna think too much about it. I'm just going to kinda like wrap it in a circle like so and just place it on top of the perlite and whatever happens, happens. So <laughs> next we have um, some Hoya and Hoya are different from philodendron for sure, but they are kind of the same idea where you wanna look for a node. So I already cut these off the mama plant, but I can do some further propagations. This is what a Hoya node will look like. There's gonna be most likely two leaves coming out of either side and you wanna leave about an inch of stem on either side of that node. I would, whoa, cut off a little bit of this extra internode here and then cut it about here. Okay, I just dropped that on the floor. But then I have two propagations, this one and the one that's on the floor. <laughs> and again, you just wanna gently bury that node in whatever growing medium that you are using and you should be fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these. And Hoya root very well in these little propagation boxes. I have noticed a pretty high success rate with the Hoya. They are good rooters, especially if you're keeping them in high humidity. Next one, I wanna spice things up a little bit and propagate a rickrack cactus because uh, people don't really talk about these all too much. I figured this could be useful for anyone that has a rickrack cactus. I have never propagated this plant before, so this is a little bit of an experiment for me. I have just noticed that this plant is getting a little bit wonky towards the end of some of their vines. You can see here, for example, it's getting very skinny towards the end. I'm just gonna make a cut right here where it tends to thin out and plop it in the prop box. All of these little things that you see hanging off of the green are actually aerial roots. I don't see this taking long to root at all since it's already pushing out some roots. I'm kind of just gonna give it the opportunity to strengthen these roots, grow a little bit more of them, and then I can plop them in soil. I just have a few little spots where I see this being appropriate. I'm gonna put them root down into the perlite. And there we go, that should be fine. I have three propagations. Also, ideally, I know someone's gonna say something about this, ideally you disinfect your shears or knife between every plant propagation, therefore you're not going to transfer any bacteria, disease, pests from one plant to another. I'm just lazy. Do as I say, not as I do. Now, the next plant I want to do, and this one is a little bit different from the others, this Cebu Blue. What I want to do with this plant is actually not really involving propagations, but maybe a few. I wanna take the moss pole out because this plant is struggling and Honestly, it looks a little pathetic on the pole. It makes it a little bit harder for me to cut things off, to keep track of. I'm taking it out of the pole and I'm gonna just start a maybe smaller vining plant and take it from there because this plant is not happy with how it's doing right now. So I figure let's try something else. Like let's just switch it up. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So first I'm gonna cut off all of the gardening ribbon that I have that is securing these vines to the pole. And this is a pole I made myself. If you wanna know how I made it, you can check out my channel. And this is the first time that I'm actually de-poling a plant because a lot of these vining plants really love a pole, but I just need to change this up because this is not looking good. Maybe she'll go back to a pole one day. Okay. 
Okay, I finally cut free all of the vines. One of them did snap off. That's okay, because we're propagating anyway. And I did lose a few leaves. I don't know what I was thinking when I tied up this plant in some of the ways that I did. All right, I'm gonna try to wiggle this out and hope that I don't have too much roots growing in here. Okay, we're just gonna get messy with it. I feel like this is horrible of me, but I'm literally just gonna cut it out of the pole. This is no longer a do as I say sitch. This is, I'm going completely rogue and I'm sorry. This is real, okay? <laughs> I just need this plant out of this stupid pole. We lost some rootage. There were roots growing into the pole, it's fine. And now I can pick apart all of the cuttings that I want to save and that look good to me. So these look good, this looks good. There's actually a very decent root system on here, which is a relief. I was kind of worried about what I would find under the surface, but I have a lot of roots. They look great. So I'm gonna pop this section in. I don't even have to downsize the pot because the roots are so established. I saw one cutting that definitely needs to be removed. Let's see. You are good. Get in there. These two are very leggy, so I'm going to remove them and we are going to propagate them. The rest are pretty full. With those, I'm going to backfill with this soil that I took out. I just don't wanna waste the soil, you guys. It's good soil. Okay! We have the repotted Cebu Blue here. She does look obviously a bit smaller and more scraggly than before, but I think that long-term, this is a, a much better situation for her because I was able to take off the growth that wasn't doing well. And also, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about this moss pole situation. We'll see if I regret cutting it free from it, but whatever, we were trying things out. For the cuttings that I've left, they got very, very leggy while they were unhappy in, in that pot. So I have a few leaves up top and then a lot of empty leggy vine down below. I'm just gonna go up to where there's growth and then go maybe like two nodes down, take a snip, and then put it in the little perlite. And I can do that for this one as well. That looks good. I'm keeping these a little bit larger. I'm making these multi-leaf cuttings just because the leaves are smaller and this plant was definitely not super happy. So again, I want to give a little bit more insurance on these cuttings because they're less established. And all that's really left for me to do on this front is spray them. So I have my spray bottle here with just some distilled water and I'm going to spray the nodes in the perlite. With some of the more textured leaves, like the micans, I'm gonna try not to get too much water on the leaves, but with plants like Koya, you can be a little bit more, I don't know, not careful with them. And we're good. We're done. Honestly, this is just clean up now. <laughs> Let me show you what we have uh, going on in this little box. Okay, just wanted to give you a brief overview as to what's happening in this box. I really am not looking forward to cleaning that up, but that is <laughs> my reality right now. This is the little Mikan section. The Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. The String of Hearts. The Cebu Blue. And the Rick Rare Cactus. And then a Pity Scindapsis Pictus that I just decided to leave in here. I'm just gonna take the lid, close it up. And we're good. <laughs> all right, and that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna check them out, they will be linked in my description box. The first thousand subscribers to click that link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. I really appreciate you all staying with me as I 
propagated a little bit. I know, I know I wasn't perfect, but I'm, I did it how I wanted to do it. Thank you all for coming along for the ride. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed already. You wanna see more planting content from me. Hit that like button, the notification bell, leave a comment, check out the merch, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Huge thank you to all of my members. Thank you to O'Neal, Val, Katrina, Audrey, Louie, Heather, underscore B, Jacqueline, Brooke, Daniel, Vanessa, Michelle, Tori, Candy, and Pam. You guys are the best, and I'll see you in my next video.